if the ones in the front want to kind of bend over, yeah, the ones in the back will be able to yeah. see. It's a lot easier yeah. for everybody to sit that way. Okay. Everybody can see. Unless you give your legs a rest for the Right. <laughs> right. I never thought of that. <laughs> uh, the uh, house is one of the originals. The original means first of, one of a, first of a kind, and it's 1840. And this room and the room on the other side, the two bedrooms, there were two bedrooms upstairs. There's another bedroom. It's called a garçonnière. That's an older boy's bedroom. Garçon is boy in French. So that was their bedroom. And there was no kitchen in the house, and there was no bathroom in the house. The kitchens were detached or separated from the house because of the fire, mostly. But now nah, it's hot in South Louisiana. So in August, you didn't want a big old fire because they cook in a fireplace like that. So it detached it from the house, and it would smoke sometimes, too. But the bathroom wasn't in the house because they didn't have running water. And running water means we don't flush the toilet, the water comes <laughs> in the toilet. They didn't have that. They didn't they have it. Right. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was better to have it outside if they had to use the bucket. <laughs> so uh, this is while I'm talking to y'all, huh? The pochon. The pochon. <laughs> Very much. The water. <laughs> yes. Uh, while I'm talking to y'all, I'm cording some cotton. Have y'all ever seen the co cotton on a plant? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is what it looks like for those that didn't see it. And it's called, each one of them they cooks is called a bull. A bull is a, a it's, it's a puff of cotton, and they had about 20 seeds in each one, so you had to take the seeds out. That would have been one of your jobs. Probably three or four or five years old, you had to gin the cotton or to take the seeds out. And you had to fill up one of, one of your shoes with cotton seed at night. You know, those seeds are very small, and it's hard to pull it out. And see, this is a cotton seed right here. So it took you a long time to fill up one of your shoes. And that way, your mama, and she, she knew you did your job, so that's why you had to <laughs> fill up one of your shoes. So this has been gin. The seeds were taken out. They came up with a, an invention called the cotton gin, and it took the seeds out. So it made that part of making clothes a lot, lot easier, or making fabric. So it's ginned, and I put my gin cotton on my quarters. It looks like some big dog brushes, <laughs> and it's all jumbled up. So what it does, it just combs it. Just like you comb your hair, I comb the cotton. It smooths it out. And what the spinning wheel does, it makes the thread. And so it makes it easier to make the thread, shall I put it that way. So that piece of wood right there, I'm pressing down on my foot, is called a treadle. Before electricity, everything had to be done by hand. So before the treadle was invented, you had to turn it by hand. That was a lot harder. They invented the treadle, and it made it easier to, to spin the cotton because everything had to be done by hand because we didn't have what? What hand did they invent? Electricity. electricity. <laughs> Can you imagine living without electricity? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. yes. <laughs> just think, just think when, like a hurricane. Out when the lights go out. I know, that, that's exactly when a hurricane comes <laughs> and they have to stay two or three days without electricity or maybe two hours when... The lights go out, everybody's like, I don't know what to do. But you never had electricity. They didn't miss it because they didn't know what they had. So what I'm going to do, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't explain the spinning wheel. The treadle makes the wheel, go, makes the stick go up and down. The stick turns the wheel, turns this one, and turns my spindle or my bobbin. This little needle right here is just to turn, that machine is to turn that right there. So what I'm going to just put the two ends together, and it's going to fall off. All it's doing is falling. It's not twist. It's not rolling on my spindle right here. It's just falling off. And when it's falling, I have this fluff. It goes to my fingers right here, and it makes the thread. That's how all your clothes are made. And it takes probably about nine months, like y'all in third or fourth grade, the whole year to make one piece of clothing, like a pair of pants or a shirt or something like that. So maybe wow. every 10 years, you would have gotten a new piece of clothes. Yeah. Can you imagine you might get one every week or whatever now? And it's it's strong, you see? I can pull it like that, but this is still weak or soft. Now I can put it back together and continue going. It's the spinning or the twisting that makes it stronger. All the little fibers grab onto one another, and it makes it stronger. Now this is white. If I wanted to dye it, I'd dye the thread. But not too many people got it because it just takes too long. After the thread was made, 
bring it to the machine where they are loom, and then you make the fabric. What you do is you take your threads, you weave it in and out of one another, and then it makes your material. But not only did you have to make your clothes, you had to make your towels and blankets and sheets and pillowcases, diapers, <laughs> underwear, <laughs> everything. So it took a while. It looks so cool. It's magic, that's what I can say. And you see those balls like on the mantle? The, the balls of thread? It took me about 50 hours. That's like y'all going to school one, a little over a week to make one of them. And I need five to make one shirt or one pair of pants or a skirt or something like that. So that's why you didn't have a lot of clothes. You see, I broke it. No problem. You just put it up together. No, you take the thread and you put it back together. It's humid, but it's humid. It's getting a little screaming at me. It's not on the skin. What's that big thing on there? That's a, the same as thread, the same way, but it's a, the thicker your thread, the heavier your fabric. You had to make not only clothes, blankets, and everything else, so that would make a blanket or a heavy coat or something. Any questions? That's crazy. That's the first time I screamed like that at you. That means it's going to rain today? Uh, well, that's what I say. Usually when it rains, it screams, it screams at you when it's going to rain. So I don't know if it's going to rain or not. But if it rains, it's fine. Yes. Um, can you tell them how they would dye the clothes? How you would well, get the dye? The thread was what you dyed. You didn't dye the, the material all together. It was the thread. After you made it in, you made your thread, you make a skein or a loose piece of loose uh, ball of thread and you dye, but you had, it was all natural stuff you would dye. You couldn't go to the store because there was no store. So you, you had to see. Do, so you had to do something naturally. So the red, if you had red, you would have to be wealthy. Yeah, because there's some red. Yeah, right there's there. some red over there. Because the native, because uh, the red, the the what they dyed the red with was a beetle. It's a kush needle bug. It's a little beetle and cactus. We have no cactus that grows here naturally, or, or um, we don't have the beetle here, so we had to import it, we had to send for it and stuff like that. So you had to be welcome to have the red. I've done for Michelle and so, uh, so the red, and it's the Native Americans that showed them how to use the red dyes, the only red that doesn't fade. So it, it was very important. And then the yellow was onion skins. You know, like when your mama or daddy peels an onion and they have the skins? That's what they would have used. The, the purple of the lavender is the lichen. You know, like you go around, you know, all from over here. So and even on some of the fences over here, some of the, the trees and stuff, they have that little stuff that grows all over the place, mm -hmm. that fuzzy stuff. Well, they, it's called lichen. And they use that to dye it, the purple or the, the lavender. And then the blue was the indigo. And today, y'all, a couple of y'all have some something dyed with 